All right, everybody, GitLab just reported Q2 earnings. Revenue was up 74% year over year. And take a look at this. Right after they reported, this was yesterday after they reported, the stock went up immediately, but then the stock dropped almost 10% after hours. And now look at it. The stock's back to even after hours. So what the heck is going on? How do you own a stock like this? Why was it down? What happened? Well, first of all, let me show you that in my portfolio, I do own GitLab. It is a $7,000 position, so not one of my largest, but right there in the middle. And I didn't do anything after hours. It's not how I invest. That's one of the beautiful things about being a long-term investor is you, don't, you can ignore all this nonsense, right? In fact, after they report earnings, this was before they report earnings, I said, here's what I'm looking for. I have no idea if they're gonna beat or miss and I have no idea what the stock's gonna do. But as a long-term shareholder, I'm watching the dollar-based net retention rate. I wanted it to remain above 130%. That's how much current customers spend in the following year. So if it's above 100%, that means current customers in year one spend more in year two than they did the previous year. So if it's 130%, that means they spend 30% more than they did previously. It is a fantastic metric to judge. You could almost invest in companies that have the highest net dollar retention rate alone. If, if, that, if there was any one factor, the only factor that I could use in enterprise software, that would be it. If I just owned the top five companies or 10 companies with the top 10 dollar-based net retention rates, I think I would do pretty well over time. Anyways, the other thing I was watching is customers spending over $100,000 ARR. I wanted that to be up by more than 40 customers. I said, if they nail these, they're on track. I didn't care what the stock did. I want to know that the company's on track. Right after they reported earnings, I said, they beat on non-GAAP EPS by eight cents. Revenue was 101 million, 74% year over year. That was a beat by 6.6 .6 million. Dollar-based net retention, that was one of my big marks, was 130%. Customers are over 130%. Customers spending over 100K increased to 593, up 48. So again, above my 40 or 45 number. Um, they added the largest number of base customers ever. When you see the largest number of base customers ever and you see the dollar-based net retention customer spend growing and you see more customers spending over 100K, 48, then that means that these customers are likely to keep spending more and then become customers that are spending over 100K. It's why it's a beautiful thing in these, in these recurring revenue enterprise software type businesses. And then trailing 12 months enterprise value to sales divided by the fiscal year 2023 revenue growth was 0.34. Okay, that's a lot of numbers there, but I want that number to be under 0.43. So 0 0.34 is a great area for it to be in considering their growth, in my opinion. Then I said the stock's down 10% after hours. I saw no reason to trim or sell my position and will look to add opportunistically since it's not a full-size position. And then the shares are flat, so whatever. Again, here's their guidance for Q3. The, essentially, Q3 guidance actually beat expectations. So they expect revenue of 105 to 106 versus consensus of 103.69, gap earnings per share of negative 16 to negative 15 cents versus a consensus of negative 25 cents. So that's also better than consensus. And then for the full year, 411 million to 414 million versus a consensus of 400 million. And then for the full year, non-gap EPS, negative 67 to negative 64 cents versus consensus of negative 89 cents. So again, beats all around, beat on guidance. It made zero sense to me that this stock was trading off. And that's just people, I don't know, it's probably algorithms. Actually, it's not even people, but it's a mixture of algorithms. And then when the stock goes down, more algorithms and stop loss prices and sell prices hit, and then it just compounds more and more. That's what I think is going on, and that's why I don't mess with any of that, and we're never going to beat that. We're never going to beat the algorithms that are way faster than us, the computers that are way faster than us, trying to trade in and out. I am investing for the next 10, 15, and 20 years of my life, and I want to own the best companies around and ignore essentially what the stock price is doing over the short term. That's how I think I'm going to win over the long term. And here's how I think about the stock. This is Fast Graphs. I'm a paying user. This is not an advertisement in any way. I just like this sophomore software a lot. Um, what this is, is a graph 
that shows potential price scenarios, really. So this line right here is the current price of the stock. And these lines, these lines represent different price to sales ratios. We have five down at the bottom, all the way up to 20 at the top. The reason it's 20 at the top is because that's the price to sales, a blended price sales ratio that the stock is currently trading at. Along the bottom here, the x-axis, we have the analyst expected sales growth, revenue growth per share, 1,025. So analysts are expecting revenue per share to grow 60% in 2023, 40% in 2024, and 44% in 2025. And then I have slowly brought that down, 39% in 2026, 34.6% uh, in 2027, and 29% in 2028. These are all estimates. I just tried to bring the revenue down slowly over time. They could beat this, they could do worse. Nobody actually knows. At that time, in 2028, if revenue is growing by 30%, I would be comfortable with it at a price sales ratio of around 10, okay? So that's how I'm thinking about it. And so what we could do is we could see what the return would be from here at a price sales ratio of 10 or whatever, during these times. So let's take a look, right? So if I think the price sales ratio is going to drop from 20 down to 10, if that happens between now and 2024, then I'm going to lose 18% on my money, total rate of return minus 18%. But 2024 is not that long for long-term investors. If this company does well and I'm truly a long-term investor and stay invested, then check it out one more year price sales ratio of 10 thanks to the revenue growth i've now got a total rate of return of 18 percent for a total annualized rate of return of seven percent that's a pretty decent annualized rate of return the market generally does eight to ten percent a year but if the company keeps performing i am a even longer term shareholder and it stays at a price sales ratio of 10. again because the revenue is growing every year the stock's going to go up if it stays at a price sales ratio of 10. Annualized rate of return turns to 16% per year for a 64% annualized rate of return. Then if it stays at a price sales ratio of 10, 121% total return in the next year. And then if it stays at a price sales return of 10, 180, 186% for a 21.5% annualized rate of return. That is elite territory that puts you in the category of the best investors in the world. Now, this is not going to happen the way that this is laid out. Stocks never go up in a straight a straight line. They go up and down and up and down. People panic. They're not going to hit all of these revenue numbers. They're going to maybe miss some. They're going to hit some. They might do way better. They might do worse. What I'm going to do is I'm going to track the stock. I'm going to keep having metrics that I watch that are meaningful for the underlying business. And if the underlying business continues to perform according to my thesis, the reason I'm invested, then I'm going to continue to hold the stock. Now, if it gets extreme and it's trading at a price sales ratio of 20 with 30% revenue growth in 2028, heck yeah, I would probably sell my shares if they were up 480% in, in five years and it was trading at a price sales ratio of 20 with 30% revenue growth at that time. Yes, I, I would probably at least trim my shares or, or sell because I would think that at that point, the stock is extremely overvalued. So I'm not just blindly holding these things, but if it's trading in a range that I think is reasonable, I'm not gonna sell or trim my position if it gets a little bit overvalued compared to where I think it can be. That I don't think I can win that way. I don't wanna pay the taxes on that stuff. Anyways, hope you enjoyed this video. Like the video if you can, helps more people find it. Subscribe to the channel, turn the notification bell on if you want to join this long-term investing journey with me and never miss an update.